in the evening when I'm done working on my videos during the day, I like to relax, stop thinking and watch a movie on Netflix or something else. And even there, I can't really relax my mind and see loads of secret messages and occult symbolism of which I reveal some in this video here. This movie called The Exorcism of Emily Rose is based upon the true story of Anneliese Michel during the 70s in Bavaria, Germany, who started to wake up between 3 and 4 in the night, which officially is the demon hour. So if you wake up at 3 every night, you know there's something wrong and you must act immediately, like finding another place to sleep, move to another town and change your habits before it's too late. As in the case of Annalisa, who in the end was possessed by six demons and died from exhaustion at the age of 19. So here you can see a genuine picture of Annalisa and how she was possessed. The demon hour or devil's hour between three and four is of course related to the concept of three for the compass and the concept of four for the square, which you can see here, the circle for the compass and the square is here. There are four squares in it. So this here says square and compass which is not a coincidence. And why do Freemasons have the concept of three and four, their compass and square? Well, the letter G, of course. Like the Freemason G dominating the demon hour, starting at three, in the morning, referring to our masters and their triangle hierarchy of Pharaoh's pyramid and ending at 4 a.m. for the square, down at the pyramid, where the grass grows and the sheeple graze. The 324 Demon Hour is an interdimensional gate letting demons into our realm by the same evil powers that created Freemasonry and their concept of three and four. I'll explain it one more time for you. So we start, this is the demon hour enclosed here in the middle by the three, this is the three and starting at three from the top down and here the four. So in between the three, this is the concept of three and the concept of four at 4 a.m. and between 3 a.m is the demon hour with the G here. So I'll explain it one more time. The compass is about 60 degrees and with 60 degrees, you can make a equilateral triangle with three equal lengths, like the side of the pyramid almost. And each angle has about 60 degrees. So they call it the concept of three because there are three angles, three corners and three sides. 
And they, the concept of three are our masters because it's the hierarchy, it's the side, the triangle, the side of the pyramid. So this is them, it starts with them at 3 a.m. to control the slaves, the ones who might have a connection, a divine connection, so they get attacked like in between three and four. And some people have to change places every night, you know, because of this, or they should. And then this is us. This is 90 degrees, with 90 degrees, you can make a square which has four angles, four corners and four sides. So they call it the, the, the concept of four. This is 4 a.m. in the morning where it ends. And which is also the, the base of a pyramid where we are, where the sheep are grazing. So it ends, the demon hour, it ends like with the with the slaves with the concept of four they are magicians you know the first weapon is the lie anyway so this is a perfect representation of the demon hour our masters starting at 3 a.m and ending with us attacking us the slaves at 4 a.m it's not a coincidence. And three plus four is seven. And the G happens to be the seventh letter in the alphabet. And that's, this is why the number seven is the holy number, like in the Bible. And the Bible is a pharaonic book, except maybe the book of Revelations and something happened there, you know. And uh, but especially the Old Testament, it's it's all Pharaonic, you know. King Solomon was married with the daughter of Pharaoh. It says so. The um, Inri himself, he was uh, from the house of David, a royal house of kings. That's why they put a crown on his head. The um, the divine powers, whatever you call them, they didn't see even the um, existence of any Europeans as the Bible stops at the Mediterranean. So, you know, God does not see everything. People, use your minds. You're going to, you're going to lose this game afterwards, you know, if you just re believe this religious hocus pocus. You have to sort it out, what is what you can believe and what you cannot believe. So just look at the story of Annalisa. She was not protected and she was very devout. So this is the concept of three. This is where the demon hour starts. And it ends at with a concept of four, at 4 a.m. I'll read it for you here. Annalisa Michel. A true story of a case of demonic possession, Germany, 1976. And the pictures you're going to see right after, just as the other ones before, they are genuine pictures of the possessed Annalisa Michel from Germany. Annalisa was a very devout Bavarian Christian attending the Holy Mass twice a week. So we can with all certainty assume that she begged this God of the Orient and his Middle Eastern Jesus Christ for help. But all in vain, the God of Egypt and his only son from the royal house of King Pharaoh David, let her down, letting her die the most agonizing death at the altar of this oriental religion around Jerusalem in the backyard of Pharaoh. So this is the picture of her here when she died or probably even when she's already dead it's a genuine picture 
She begged, she prayed, and the God of Egypt did not help, and neither did his son. Remember, nothing good has ever come from the church. Nothing. Annalisa Michel. Here you can read about her, Annalisa Michel. She was born on September 21st, 1952. There she is, lovely girl. And here it says, here, early life. Born as Anna Elisabeth Michel on September 21st, in 1952, in Leibelfing, Bavaria, West Germany, to a Roman Catholic family. Michel was raised along with three sisters by her parents, Joseph and Anna. She was religious and attended Mass twice a week, it says. And she was, uh, Michel, Michel attended the University of Würzburg. Uh, and by the way, Würzburg is the place where they, where they burned uh, most of the so-called witches in Germany. Um, it's, it's very known for that. They burned a lot of good women in Würzburg. Her classmates later described her as withdrawn and very religious. But it was all in vain, no help. So you can read about it, exorcism. Prosecution, the death, the trial. Oh, there is a doctor here, a psychiatrist, the doctor Richard Roth. Roth, like, oh, well, that rings a bell, doesn't it? Yeah. Annalisa also had stigmata just i also had twice in my tent but i survived so far although death has been near on many occasions so i filmed this in this video here on my channel Gatsefrats, and i have no idea how that happened I'll put the link under the um, in the description under the video. The difference is that I fight against this evil instead of praying for my own soul to be saved in this religious hocus pocus ritual. I read it out loud for you here. We should all fight against evil. Evil is intolerable. So how could evil and its demons possibly grab my soul if I myself don't even acknowledge the importance of saving my own selfish soul in the age of egoism? The whole hysterical emphasis on saving your own ego soul has been infiltrated by evil, as you can see here, where it's written, save my soul, with the concept of three and four for the Freemason compass and square in the letter O, and even in the very word soul itself. Here lies, in fact, the crucial point of protecting one's soul. Because if I, myself, don't even see into that, give it my attention and my energy and focus upon the whole time, then how the hell can any goddamn demon do so 
and even find my soul without me leading the way by my own constant focus on it, like, here it is, you all see it, with all headlights on it. And this is what probably happened to the Bavarian Annalisa Michel going to the Holy Mass twice a week. Don't you ever do this, and especially not in a goddamn church, where you might suck in all sorts of entities from the other realm, while saying with that holy expression on your face, Please, come into my heart and save me which is exactly what the forces of evil had been waiting for. So patiently, all these millennia, saying, I'm coming, honey, don't you worry anymore. I'll take care of you from now on, onwards, and eternally. Damn, I can't even relax in my tent for a moment and quietly watch a good movie without all this running through my brain. Damn. A woman in general is far more susceptible to all this and letting other entities inside because she has the ability to conceive another entity and soul inside and communicate with it when she is having a baby, thus inviting another soul inside. A man cannot, therefore a man should be the head of the family and close the door for intruders, both physically, spiritual, and metaphysically, if necessary, and protect the nest and the frag fragile procreation. This is why, in Genesis, the snake on Pharaoh's head seeks Eve the most susceptible one to open the door, to come in and have a peep inside. Here in the 2012 movie Jack Reacher with forever young actor Tom Cruise, at around five minutes playtime, an enormous sun hieroglyph, also pronounced hieroglyph, sun hieroglyph, is being shown for an unnecessary and suspicious long time, having absolutely nothing to do with the entire film. Within the middle of the sun hieroglyph, a circle for the compass with a square in it, as in square and compass, or squaring the circle, as Freemasons say. So here you can see all dead people lying around. They just got shot by a sniper. And this is the sun hieroglyph or hieroglyph, with the sun in the middle and two bars on each side. And here there's a square in the middle in the sun for the square and compass, and it's also the base of the pyramid, it's a concept of four. And this here, the circle, is stands for the compass, which is a concept of three. So it's all occult stuff showing in all these uh, videos. And in the next shot, you already see the police storming out a police car with all the um, 
uh, special police heroes storming out who actually get their orders from these ones here, the Square and Compass and the Sun Hieroglyph. Square and Compass are the descendants of Pharaoh, the Freemasons, and the whole Sun Hieroglyph, it's Pharaoh. So here again, you can see the, old, the people lying on the, uh, on the ground. Here's in a pool of blood here. Here's a little suitcase. Charming picture, isn't it? And on this pharaonic symbology by the Freemasons, there are dead people, bled to death, lying on it as in a huge blood ritual in an open air Freemason temple, sacrificed by Pharaoh with the forever young main actor quite certainly taking the stem cell youth elixir drinking the blood of three months old unborn babies keeping them young forever so you see this is probably the film top gun from 1986 and now 30 years later he still looks the same she by the way she got a little bit older <laughs> it's amazing. The vampires that they are. Jack Reacher reaching into the source of eternal youth. Which I explained to you here in this video um, two years ago on the same channel here. Here's the title, Youth Elixir of Pharaoh's Vampire Aristocracy Masters of Alchemy Embryonic Cells. They do this, people. They really do. I've initiated the world into the Sun Hieroglyph secret symbol 12 years ago in my film, The Pharaoh Show, in which I explained what it means and how it's being used. So here, this is the same thing which, what you just saw uh, on the ground with the dead bodies. In the middle, there's the sun, like in the, uh, in the movie, Jack Reacher, and with two bars on each side. And, and they show it in different ways. You know, I show a couple of different ways they show it even in this video here. So, now you can read that text here. It says uh, 2012, but they actually uploaded it in 2010 because it was on my first channel, also called Gyuri, which got taken down. And then, um, uh, luckily enough, I, I still, um, or I made another copy on this channel. That's how it was. Yeah. So I uploaded it in October 2010. That was the first video ever I uploaded. So it's called The Pharaoh Show. That was the original title. This I added later on. The Pharaoh Show in the Sun Hieroglyph, or Sun Hieroglyph, as some people say. And in the same occult movie by our masters, at one hour, and 39 minutes on the floor in the elevator a circle with three squares again symbolizing the freemason square and compass or square and circle with four delta secret symbols being seen in many logos and many open air Masonic aristocratic symbols, as I've shown you in a recent video on this channel here. So this is inside the elevator, which you can see part of the door here. And the circle here it stands for the compass, because with the compass you can make a circle. And the square, also the downside of a pyramid, where we are, the 
you know, they're slaves down at the pyramid, down at the hierarchy, which is a concept of four. There are four corners and four sides. So with the square, which is 90 degrees, you can make this square. And there are four of them here. One, uh, two, and a big one here. Four, this one here. Uh, sorry, three. So, which is again also the concept of three. And only one square is the concept of four. And then we have got these things here, what I've shown in a recent video called uh, Humanity uh, Getting Delta All the Time, over and over again. Something like that. It's, it can be seen a lot of times, this symbol here. And it has a meaning. It all has a meaning. Well, I mean, why do they put this in an elevator and show it in this video? And they showed a very long time, very suspiciously, you know. It has no meaning in the in the video. Why show it? You know? They are transmitting messages amongst each other and to their descendants. But humanity is blind. Again, there's a body lying on the occult government logo of our masters, meaning that the Swiss octagon of the Nazi Templars and their Freemason wing have the right to kill us. That's only their organization can do so and can sacrifice any slave on their occult logos as in a satanic ritual. So here you can see the members of the Swiss Octogon of the Knights Templars who are suiciding someone. Sometimes they accident someone, a person getting accidented, like thrown out of a window or something. And sometimes they, a person is getting suicided. The body, they probably throw the body also out of a window somewhere or some sort of an accident. This is the Swiss Octogon. This is what they do. Do you need any more proofs? Will you finally stand up? Or are you gonna die? On your knees. What's it gonna be? I've given you all the proofs now. How, who, where, origin, main base, their history, their symbols, and their actual hiding place, and their names. What's it gonna be? So it's here in this recent video on the same channel here where i explain their delta symbol another one of their transmission symbols i'll put the link to the video in the description box underneath this video so as you see it's in the same channel homeland security the title is Humanity Gets delta Over and Over Again. And we just saw this symbol here in the elevator. And it's here also in Russia. This is America. They have the same symbols. It's the same people ruling over us. And it's also in this here, in the pentagram. And you just witnessed a woman getting delta in an elevator, in a so-called innocent-looking Hollywood video, which is not very innocent at all. Persons getting delta in the video on a Freemason Knights Templars octagon occult symbol. Maybe you didn't see it, but it says 
on their DVD. Tom Cruise is Jack Reacher. The law has limits. He does not. As they just smear it right into our faces. Well, you know now where that refers to. As I've just shown that. Here it says, the law has limits. He does not. We've just seen it happening. You know, people getting sacrificed on a Freemason symbol. They're above the limits. The Freemasons, they have a person called the Enforcer. You know, the Reacher. Tom Cruise is Jack Reacher. You know, like he's, they are reaching out where it's not allowed, where we cannot, but they do it. Because the law has limits, but they don't have any limits. You know, this is what they mean. You know, they can suicide us. They can accident us. That happens every day, a couple of times around the globe. You know, people getting accidented, getting suicided. And uh, recently, this year, it happened with a uh, French um, uh, billionaire. And um, he got thrown out of a window and he got suicided. If I still have the time, I'll make a video about that. And remember what happened in the elevator. You know, the woman getting suicided on one of their logos. I repeat for you, the law has limits he does not jack reacher they can do whatever they please with the slaves and these are in the video they are just showing an octagon agent of the nazi templars based in switzerland so look at the Templars V here in the video. So here at 2 hours and 31 minutes in the film Schindler's List of 1993, the Nazi train full of jaywalkers going into Auschwitz. And again, I have to say jaywalkers which is not a bad name. It's more like a, um, a compliment. And uh, because, because of the censorship, I cannot use their real name because the machine will take off my video right away. So you can see here the Nazi train full of jaywalkers going into Auschwitz. And I have to say you tell you that Auschwitz, I believe it happened. And please do not put me in prison because I might have another idea, which I do not. So leave me alone, okay? I've got nothing against the jaywalkers, yeah? Is that okay with you? So the train full of jaywalkers going into Auschwitz with the same Templars V as the Nazi Putin is using on his vehicles of the Russian Nazi invasion of the Ukraine. As Putin's Nazi code of the octagon is the Black Prince, which I explain in this eight hour documentary here. On the same channel and I will put the link in the description. Homeland Security, same channel, the Swiss Beast Home of the Devil Part 7, Switzerland's sleeper agent put in. Yeah, they're great pals, you know, the same lineage. And here again in the same movie uh, Schindler's list at two hours and twenty-nine minutes. The V train, the V Templar train of Auschwitz. And underneath it says 
Zwittau Brinlitz, Czechoslovakia, and Oskar Schindler's hometown. I'm sorry, I got that off. So here in 1945, you can see the German soldiers defeated, disillusioned, and defeated not really by the Russian army, as you can see here, the Russian soldiers. They're parading them here in Moscow. You see here miles and miles of soldiers. They never came back. No, the Russians didn't defeat them, but the Americans did because without the American shipments of tons and tons and tons of war materials, the Russians could never have defeated the German army. So these are normal German soldiers of the German people. Um, so the Germans lost the war but the nazis won the war with everything they hid on looted goods and the various gold reserves in the motherland in the alps and also russia had of course its paperclip operation in 1945 of German Nazis legally disappearing into Russia and taking their Templar V, as you can see here again, with them into Russia, which we can now see today everywhere presented on their armor and elsewhere. So, from Schindler's list and the V train of the Nazi Templars of Octogon to today's Russia's Nazi Templar V tanks and armored cars, of the victorious Nazi Templars, victorious over two world wars, and their equally victorious octagon bays in the Alps. So here you can see the Templars V in the pharaonic colors of white, blue and red during one of the Black Prince Putin, his recent hysterical war propaganda speeches in Moscow. Pharaoh had three crowns, the white crown of the Berhet White House of Upper Egypt, the red crown of the Pertasser Red House of Lower Egypt, and the blue war crown, of which all pharaonic royal crown colors can be seen here in the Black Prince, his Templar V. So here you can see it, white for the White House, per hat crown, the blue war crown, and the red per tasser, the red house crown in the Templar V here, happening in Moscow with Putin standing here probably and uh, it's all war propaganda. Nothing has changed the last 2000 years. They're on both sides and it's still happening today, actually now, during the Ukraine war. And here you can see Russian children forcibly being indoctrinated with Putin's Nazi ideology forced to draw the Nazi Templar V, also used by the Nazis in World War II, who also forcibly indoctrinated Germany's youth with the very same Nazi Templar filth from their motherland in the Alps. Nazism 
of the 21st century, the Nazis never went away. Nazism of the 20th century, same thing. 21st century, 20th century. Same thing on the other side by this pharaonic Mars murderer with his Templar V. As each war gets controlled by the same enemy within on both sides. Look, it's the same V Putin is using, the Nazis are using, V for victory. Well, who, victory for whom? Victory for the enemy within who are getting stronger and stronger while the peoples are fighting each other. Pharaoh, the Freemasons and the Templars getting stronger, stronger, stronger. By each war, they put us in. More about this nobility war criminal later on in the video. V for a victory, the Templars a victory in the pharaonic colors, red, white and blue, just as today. And here he gives a transmission of the White House per head, horizontal rule, new world order, which is in fact the meaning of uh, transmitting the information with a white handkerchief in the left breast where the heart is. I mean a handkerchief can be any color, right? Here the Templar V, Pharaonic colors, united we stand as in the Templar saying one for all and all for one. Uno pro uno, unus pro omnibus, omnes pro uno. Or where we go one, we go all. It's all the same thing. It's the same people, and it's 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 never gonna end, eh? Even Russia's Indians love Putin's Nazi symbology, believing the advantage for these Russian Indians, believing Putin's empty promises in genuine Nazi style. What a great world we're living in, eh, Swissy? Here you can see um, concentration camps in South Africa by the British nobility. Here's some pictures. This is the concentration camp. There they are, even children. And this is what they did to them just before they died. She died as well. So the first concentration camps in modern history were in South Africa from 1899 to 1902 when the British nobility massacred 28,000 white South African Boer children and their mothers. In the nobility's concentration camps by the Baron Lord Kitchener. Here he is, the first Baron Horatio Herbert Kitchener, the first Earl Kitchener was an Anglo Irish senior, has nothing to do with Ireland. This is Pharaoh's nobility. This guy was a Baron and an Earl. Uh, the first Viscount Alfred Milner. The High Commissioner for Southern Africa from 1897 onwards. There he is, Alfred Milner. 
and he was also one of the four authors of the Belfer Declaration. There's a mass murderer, this one here, the first Viscount Milner. And there was the, the third Marques. Now you can see Lord Kitchener again here. Now here's a picture of Lord Kitchener. There's a horrible person. And this one here, the third Marquess of Salisbury, Robert Arthur Talbot Gascoigne. Well, that's French, eh? Cécile, the Prime Minister and Foreign Secretary of England. They're all aristocrats. Uh, there he is. The third Marquess of Salisbury, Talbot Gascoigne Cécile. As I told you, you know, the uh, French is the original uh, language of the nobility, Pharaoh's nobility in Europe. So here I've shown you three of these. Um, the um the high nobility who made the concentration camps in uh southern africa in south africa actually so yeah you can read about it and also the v symbol was there when the concentration camps were made by the british nobility and in fact, Lord Winston Churchill was there helping to build the concentration camp. He's a son, he was a son of a duke and born in Blenheim Castle. And the concentration camps were, of course, organized by many, many more other aristocrats of the worldwide pharaohs there's the v symbol again it's being used today and here again we can see churchill's or lord aristocrat churchill's v for victory in a much older symbol and here of course is the circle for the compass there are four other circles here and this in fact, is the Sun hieroglyph. It's a circle with a dot in it, which is the official hieroglyph for the Sun. And it looks like a Sun. Here it says 666. And there are seven. Um, it's, it's a seven pointed star because that's the concept of three and four. Like the G is the seventh letter in the alphabet. And uh, there are four rings here. The ring in itself is the concept of three, and there are four. So it says three and four. That's why there are seven um, uh, points. It's a seven pointed star here. And this is the downward pyramid, the inverse pyramid, like in Auschwitz, um, you know, to. Um, for all the different uh, variations of um, of prisoners in there. And of course the colors are red and white for the Knights Templars. And it says in hoc signal vinces. We're gonna have a look what it means. So this is all related to Churchill. Eh? So here you can see Lord Winston Churchill signing the damn thing here, probably signing to kill all the jaywalkers in Auschwitz with this inversed pyramid here, the pyramid of death. And here it says, in hoc signo vinces. Look at the expression on his face. <laughs> Doesn't look good, eh? And here are the, uh, the V symbol here, the seven pointed stars uh, with the sun hieroglyph in the middle. It's exactly the same thing. So this here is about in hoc signo vinces. It means in this sign thou shalt conquer. Vinces is conquer, like in the French vaincre. 
Signal is, of course, the symbol or sign, you know, that says sign. Yeah, it's, it's a says sign. Um, in hoc signal vinces. In this sign thou shalt conquer. And it is from uh, 200 and, or 300 before uh, Christ. So it's still in the Pharaonic era. And they uh, they adhere it to the uh, to, to the Christian religion here, which is of course well, religion is just another tool to uh, to indoctrinate our minds into not defending oneself and etc etc. That some some uh, power in disguise is going to save you and whatever. Uh, this is interesting because. It says also on a, on a Portuguese coin in hoc no signo vinces. And why? Because the entire Templars fleet, it went to, well, one part, it went to, um, to Portugal. There's a lot of Templar stuff. And I filmed for you when I was in Spain, a lot of it. This is from 1721. And this is another way to make a Templars cross. And we can all see the Swiss cross in the middle, which also the Nazis had on their, in this way, they had it on their tanks, remember? And here it says, um, uh, in hoc, yeah, in hoc signo vinces. You know, it's, it's all Templar stuff. Here again, the v, the v symbol of the Knights Templars. Here the upside down V, it's also being used. Templar crosses all over, and it's all related to the crown. This is the old world's order, and this here is the new world's order. This is the vertical rule, where they all come from, and this is the horizontal rule. It's, 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 everything is in it. So now you know what it means. In hoc signo vinces, and Mr. Churchill, the, uh, the mass murderer, the, the war criminal, he was entirely into this, you know transmitting it to his own people and for you it's all a mystery why he was doing it and people just copy it oh that's so nice we're all gonna do it yeah let's do it together oh isn't that lovely stupid slaves eh? we may therefore assume that the german concentration camps only 30 years later after the nobility's concentration camps in South Africa and the concentration camps from 1933 onwards in Germany were also the work of Pharaoh's nobility. This time, the German nobility, who are the same Pharaonic Per A, big house family with the British nobility. And you see the, the V train, Putin's V train coming again. Putin or Hitler, it's all the same. So I explain in this video here, the nobility world wars on my channel, Gure, the other channel, how deeply involved the German high nobility were in the Second World War. And I explain, I have explained in another video, but I don't remember which one, or it, I don't even remember the channel. Um, one of the reasons for which the German high nobility wanted to exterminate the all the jaywalkers because the German high nobility, there was the vertical feudal rule of Pharaoh and who didn't want to mix their slaves. They were so satisfied with their German slaves. They were good workers, you know, they just drink their beer and they're happy. And so they didn't want the mixture of all the peoples, which we see today, the big melting pot of the bare head White House the new world of the new world, uh, the order of the new world overseas in America. And uh, 
the whole mixture of races and religions of the, the new world or the horizontal world system of the Knights Templars. So they, uh, they transmitted that to the rest of the nobility who didn't want to listen. And finally, they did this final solution. They waited long enough, probably hundreds of years. And they said, okay, let's do it. This is enough now. Let's get rid of them. And this is also one of the reasons. So it's, it's fair all over, you know, all over the whole idea and behind all the concentration camps, you know. And then there's that internal war making things even worse, not for them, but for us. By the way, the first Vikant, Alfred Milner, was also one of the four authors of the Belfort Declaration from 1917, initiating Zionism for nobilities, jaywalker, runaway slaves in their 2000 year diaspora. So you can see it, Alfred Milner, the first Viscount and High Commissioner of Southern Africa during the, the, the Boer concentration camps. And you can see it here on my channel here. Channel Gure as well, the other channel. The title, the nobility got their runaway slaves back from the, whom the Republic had chased away namely the british nobility was well aware of the threats by the german old world order feudal nobility to eliminate all the jaywalkers in germany because the german vertical rule nobility didn't want the mixture of peoples races and religions in their Germany. As the New World Order horizontal rule wanted this, as we can see everywhere today. So here you can see the Belfort Declaration, Arthur James Belfort, the first Earl of Belfort, another aristocrat. And this is again in the same video as I've shown you before on my channel, Gure. The nobility got their runaway slaves back. So the runaway slaves are the jaywalkers, and the nobility wanted, just wanted to have them back. So there is no Zionism by the jaywalker people themselves. There is none. They are slaves just like the rest of the world. And at a certain time, at Pharaoh's time, and Pharaoh was God, they were his beloved slaves, which they are not anymore. That's gone. So, my dear Jay Walker friends, stop believing this religious hocus pocus, because you know it's it's going to be your downfall if you're going to believe more of that. You know. Just believe me, see all the facts and the proofs, and use your head, my dear friends, eh? Because I wouldn't like to see that happening again, all the horrors of World War II, eh? Yes, concentration camps are a pharaonic idea, and perpetrated by the descendants of today's worldwide aristocracy. Therefore, in every Hollywood movie, Pharaoh shows their power of the obelisk, the symbol of the Pharaonic domination, as you can see here in ancient Egypt. Just as here in the film The Jekyll, from 1997 with top actors Bruce Willis, Richard Gere, Jack Black and Sidney Poitier. 
showing the obelisk at one hour and 39 minutes, the symbol of the pharaonic domination, with their most powerful tools of today's pharaonic domination by the most powerful army in the world and its Sikorsky US Marine helicopter as today's prolongation of Pharaoh's ancient obelisk and its huge power. Or like here, the Netflix series Nightfall, with in red for the Pertasser Red House of Pharaoh for his Old World Order vertical rule. Here it is. This is the vertical rule of the Old World Order Red House of Pharaoh. Because the Old World Order has fallen, as in night fall. And no, it's not a cross in red, because the right part is missing. Yeah, the right part of this cross is missing. There is no right part. And it would have been a lot easier to make that cross out of the letter T. Here, it would have been a lot easier to make this red cross here. In red, it also shows the beginning only of the horizontal rule by the Templars, starting left on the timeline and nothing on the right side yet. Because the series Nightfall only shows the beginning of the Knights Templars and their new horizontal rule system. You see, only on the left side, it shows the beginning of the horizontal rule, which was made by the Knights Templars. On the right hand side, there is nothing because this, this series only shows the medieval beginning. And on the right hand side would be the New World Order horizontal rule after 19. 45 and this is the old the, the fall the night fall of the vertical rule in red and red is the vertical rule because it's the old world's order they're very precise people they think about everything hey the series is total propaganda and a complete lie showing the French king as a Satanist and the Templars as the divine saviors of humanity. A totally twisted, reversed history, upside down story in order to indoctrinate the slaves by the winners of history who are the Knights Templars, of course. And did you see those pyramids on the Faroe Islands in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean and belonging to the Queen of Denmark, who is related to Donald Trump? Through Trump's a royal bloodline of Nordic kings of pharaonic descent. Yeah, Donald Trump is related to most Icelanders and Danish and Norwegian royalty. So the Faroe Islands are like near to Iceland. It's like in the Atlantic. Here you can see Donald Trump. I suppose this is the Queen of Denmark. Um, you can see it in this video here on my channel again homeland security the same channel and here's the title and doesn't faroe island 
sound exactly the same as Pharaoh from Egypt, only written in a Danish way. Now look, pyramids, and there are better ones as I'm showing you, as I've shown you before. Pyramids and Pharaoh. I mean, it's all there. This reminds us of the story of the Pharaonic princess Skota going to Ireland. Oh yes, Pharaoh has been in Europe for ages with a Viking Drakkar ships looking like Pharaoh's sun bark or solar bark, which I filmed for you here in France. So it's on my channel Gatsefrats and here's the entire title. I'll put it in the description for you. And here in India, in an ancient Indian temple, this pharaonic cobra snake was found. Having the Isis horns with the Amun Ra sun disk in between, together with the ostrich feathers on the head of Osiris. So this here, the Isis horns with the sun disk, it belongs to Isis. And these ostrich feathers belong to her husband, Osiris. Which reminds us of the two feathered Indian chief. And look, they always have the double Osiris feathers on their heads. Always with the two Osiris feathers on his head. Here they are. Of whom the Book of Mormon says that the American Indians originate from the Middle East and maybe even from ancient Egypt. So if there are any Mormons, like from Salt Lake City, who are looking for further proofs of their, for their thesis that the American Indians, they come out of the Middle East, well then look at the double feathers I guess there's one feather here and the other one is here or maybe it's behind. I mean I always see two feathers and it's the same as Osiris. So there is a link somewhere. I, I do see this link. So Mormons, so dive into that link. Eh? And here is another Indian with here the Osiris double feather on his head. So the link is definitely there. It says in the book that they come from the Middle East. They both have the double feather. Well, Osiris has ostrich. And I think these are two different feathers. So, but it's every time I see two feathers. Here, Osiris. And he was where he it says wearing a distinctive crown with two large ostrich feathers at either side so this is a painting how it must have looked like in those days so this crown is the bear head of the white house of pharaoh of upper egypt and here you got a crook and this is a flail and here's red and white a little bit of red for the red house probably so reminds you the picture of the snake eh? and the indians always two feathers it's not a coincidence and like this it's usually depicted in the uh, hieroglyphs just as uh, on the snake so the Osiris was wearing a distinctive crown with two large ostrich feathers at each side and holding a symbolic crook and flail. So these are ostrich feathers. 
And the American Indians, just like the pharaohs and the Egyptians, all the time talking about spirits, the soul, the afterlife. Basically the same thing, eh? and the same two feathers. And here, it's exactly represented like this as on the snake in an Indian temple. Just keep this in your mind like this. And in fact, the snake is here as well. Here is a snake. Just keep this in your mind. Hey? Now I'm going to show it now, the Indian temple. Now here it is again. These are the Osiris ostrich feathers. Two of them. Just like the Native Americans are having them. It's exactly the same thing. And now watch this. Watch the horns and the sun disc. I'll show it to you now. So keep this in mind now. So here you can see them together. This is Osiris and this is Isis. So at the snake picture in India, in an Indian temple, you can see the ostrich feathers here around the, um, the Isis horns and the, uh, the sun disc. When Osiris was growing up, he married his sister Isis, a custom which the pharaohs of Egypt followed ever after. And Seth married Nephthys, for he too, being a god, could marry only a goddess. So in India, they got the same gods and goddesses as in ancient Egypt. And here you can see the happy family. This is their child, the falcon god Horus, Osiris, with the ostrich feathers as on the snake, and the mother Isis and also sister with the sun disc and the Isis horns. Interestingly, both Isis and Osiris are represented in the Egyptian representation in India, like man and wife, Osiris and Isis, were united by the snake, whatever that might mean. I told you so, that pharaohs were all over the world, having kings and queens in all countries during the vertical rule. And now a ruling over humanity in the Republican Templars horizontal rule. Yeah, Swiss nobility, the association of Swiss families. Well, they mean only the nobility, the aristocratic families, of course. The rest for them are no families. And of course, in India, there's also the nobility, and they still exist. And they are also of pharaonic descent, like Patsha, Navab, Maharaja, there's the word Ra, the sun god in it, Maharaja. Where are you sitting there? Indian king, Indian pharaoh. And here the Raja and the Maharaja with the word Ra, the for Amun Ra, pharaoh's sun god, Takur. Uh, it's the same all over the world, people. And it's because of India's nobility that the Egyptian cobra with the Osiris ostrich feathers and the Isis horns with sun disc were discovered inside an Indian temple. Because the worldwide nobility are of pharaonic origin. And they rule the entire world. 
over all peoples and nations in their new horizontal ruling system. You can watch the video here filmed by this Indian filmmaker. This is the video, and here's the channel. Ancient Egyptian symbols hidden in Indian temple. Uh, he probably didn't even know that it was the Osiris feathers and the uh, the Isis uh, horns and sun disk. At least he didn't talk about it. So in the film Don't Look Up from 2021 with Leonardo DiCaprio, Kate Blanchett, Meryl Streep and other top actors. At 59 minutes it shows the Freemason joining at the bed in which DiCaprio was having sex with a White House official who was telling him that she had already sex with two presidents before doing it with him. So here you see the joining. It means one for all and all for one, or where we go one, we go all, because it's made of probably acacia uh, leaves and it's all these parts made together. And if there's one part missing, it will. It won't hold anymore, so it's called the joining. Eh? Where we go one, we go all. Hey, eh, Donald? And at exactly one hour in the film, it shows that White House per head obelisk with six US Air Force jets in, of course, Delta formation, racing by, showing the might of their total control rule and the might of Pharaoh's phallic obelisks. Right after the other phallic sequence with DiCaprio being next in line to take the honor to follow two US presidents in a definitely horizontal rule White House bed story, symbolized by the White House obelisk. I mean, his predecessors were presidents after all. So the image shows it all. Obelisk, White House and Delta military power, thus transmitting that the US presidents are in fact the descendants of Pharaoh, symbolized by the huge Egyptian obelisk. The Per Het White House, President Pharaoh's home, and the power of the pyramid, as in Delta formation. Pyramid, Delta, Triangle. The six Delta formation warplanes show the horizontal rule of the Republic behind them, meaning the power and military might of the new horizontal New World Order system of our Masters and put in place by the Knights Templars and executed by their Freemasons. You see the phallic symbol, the symbol of the pharaonic domination. It has nothing to do with the video, absolutely nothing. You know, here's the the White House, which means Perhet in Upper Egypt, and here's six Delta planes here, and the horizontal rule. You can see it the uh, the contrails behind the um, behind the airplanes. And later on, it's going to make a cross here. I'll show it to you because that's all. That's also important. They they even form a cross here. So it's 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 a symbol of their total control of their of their might, 
of their superiority over the slaves. It's I mean one, two, three, four um, huge symbols and uh, transmissions of their of their of their ideas and uh, symbology. So this is the next sequence. This is what I mean. You see, it shows a cross. It's they don't do anything without uh, on on purpose. It, there's no coincidence, you know. And you can see that our colors slightly, you know. Yeah, I mean, they don't need to show contrails. These airplanes, you know, they, they can fly by without any contrails. They do it on purpose, and these are colors. Probably red, white, and blue in the pharaonic uh, colors of the pharaonic crowns. And um, I mean, this is the old world order, the vertical rule. This thing is vertical. In the times of Pharaoh, the Pharaoh was like a dictator and he ruled vertically. Well, this is the new era here of with airplanes and it's horizontal. You know, it, because we, we have the new horizontal rule, which really started off, you know, like in the in the 20th century. Or, um, yeah. And uh, they, they really completed it, you know, they, they perfected it. And this is also the story of the cross, you know. It, it tells the story of a guy who wants to be the king, the king of the jaywalkers with a... Um, and a king is vertical rule. And then he was uh, the Romans who were the Republic and at that moment and a horizontal rule. That's why we have the cross. They didn't agree with it, you know, and, and they killed him. I mean, the jaywalkers didn't kill him. No, no. the Romans did and the Republic. And of course there were other aristocrats of the jaywalkers who, who agreed with that like the fairy z's it sounds like pharaoh right so you definitely see a cross here they do nothing without a reason nothing 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 ever and here the film special correspondence with eric bana and ricky gervais from 2016 showing a swiss cross and the concept of four and three on an old new york building at 54 minutes plus the swiss cross is shown together with the sun hieroglyph and the pyramid above the door so here you see Eric Bana and here Ricky Gervais. It's a French name, probably an aristocrat as well, as all old English names with the French. Home. They are of a um, French aristocratic origins. So here you see the Swiss cross here. And it has another four squares in it for the concept of four. And so where's the concept of three? Oh, look, there it is here. The side of the pyramid. So this is the side of the pyramid and this is the base of the pyramid. So it says square and compass. And here's the sun hieroglyph or hieroglyph, which, I, uh, which I've shown in my first film, the, uh, the Pharaoh show. It's uh, the whole building looks like a temple, actually, which I'm which I'll show you now. So here you can see the whole building. It also has a a uh, 60 degree. It looks like a 60 degree angle here from here to here. On top of this temple, there's another pyramid sort of things with two probably Yashin and Boa sticking out. And here the Swiss cross, the base in the Alps, three times. Now here too, there's the concept of three. It shows one, two, three times. And the thing in itself has four squares for the concept of four. And here again, sorry, the door is missing. Couldn't get it on the picture anymore. 
So there's always a reason they're using these buildings in in Hollywood videos and other videos. And there's also a reason they they show it that long, which is absolutely most of the time it has absolutely no connection to the film itself. You know, it's all inside messages and uh, inside transmissions of ideas and things going on in the future, things have that went on in the past and uh, etc. So. Of course, the first thing I saw was the Swiss cross. I mean, you can't miss it. In the middle of New York on an old building. Now, what is a Swiss cross doing in the middle of New York on an old building? Eh? I already told you that. Eh? Here, another picture. Here you see the famous New York cab. And it has a car in front with the, well, it looks like a G. Well, of course it is. Eh? It's all Masonic here, the whole building. And it says new, so maybe someone in New York can check it out, what, uh, what's, it, what's it all about. At 48 minutes into the Italian film, Io sono libero, about the Italian mafia, who one sees in the stairs of the Justice Department somewhere in Sicily, and probably in Palermo, a huge square and a circle for the compass, all in marble, standing for square and compass. Here it is. With the compass, you can make a circle. And this is the square, which is the base of the pyramid. So this is the concept of four, and this is the concept of three. I already explained that to you. And it is in red and white, Knights Templar colors out of whom the Freemasons come, and in the Justice Department, it's, uh, it's, it's total Freemason rule by the judges, the lawyers, and so they love to walk on it and see it every day, and uh, oh, isn't that lovely, eh? they say to each other then, or think for themselves. We see this a lot. Everything has a reason. It's just not just because it it looks good. Well, it, it doesn't look good, actually. It has a reason. And um, so look out for it, people. And in the building, there are probably more of these things. You can see one here and one here. They're probably on every level. Uh, here I see the joining, just like on the bed with DiCaprio in white. And, uh, you know, they, they put it all over. So they feel at home here in the Justice Department. And you probably do not feel very much at home in this place where they attack you. You know, in a legal sort of what they say, a legal way. So this is the entrance of the building, the Justice Department with the square and compass in the, uh, in the staircase. So if you're living in Sicily, go and have a look and take some pictures. And as I've told you so in my videos about the Mafia, that our masters have a legal Mafia, which you can see here, and an illegal Mafia, the whole crime syndicate, and a lot of them based in Sicily, but the mother base is, of course, Switzerland. And the illegal mafia and their legal mafia, they all work together because they all come out of this here, you know, an, an aristocratic coat of arms. And here another one, the wings of, uh, the, of the falcon, Horus, crown on it here. This is where they come from. The pillars here, Yashin and Boaz. And, you know, so it doesn't get that obvious. They have a illegal mafia to do the things what the legal mafia can't, because it would get too obvious. But more and more we can see that their legal mafia, these ones here, 
tend to do the illegal things uh, in, in a very uncovered and obvious way. You know, they, they don't even hide it anymore. So I show this in these two videos on my channel, Gyure. This one here and this one here. And I have more videos about the Mafia on my old channel, Hatsefats, and the channel that was taken down. So this is in Swaziland. You, we can see the same marble as in the Palermo Justice Department, the same colors, you know, this sort of reddish and white, because it's all the same thing. And Mafia, it comes from the... Uh, from the Latin, mi anima fidelem, jus arian. And here the slayer saints pray and slay. So soon I'll put it all together in one video. And um, so this would be on my channel here. Uh, Cure. There you go. They have a legal mafia and an illegal mafia. It's a very smart way to do that. At 1 hour and 37 minutes into the Italian film Liberi di Selier from 2019 about the Mafia and its English version called Sons of Ndrangheta. They show the logo of an Italian association supposedly to help juvenile victims of the mafia called l'isola de sole meaning the island of the sun showing a square and circle for the compass and concept of three in nice colorful colors like in a child's drawing to distract us from their real intentions so here you can also see their real intentions what they do with the juvenile victims of the mafia and of course this is all by the government it's all politics and there, here's the square in blue for the war crown so it's a war, you know, and, um, and here is the circle for the compass. So it says square and compass, and it even has the concept of three and in red, you know, all these colors, they mean something. And of course, uh, yellow stands for the sun and also often used uh, for white in ancient Egypt. And red is the old world order on top of it all. And <clears throat> so it's all, it's total Freemasonry. I mean, it's obvious. And l'isola del sole, the island of the sun. The moment you hear sun, you know, it should ring a bell. You know, and the moment you see a square and a circle, it should ring a bell. And of course, l'isola del sole is not really Sicily what they mean with it for us the slaves l'isola del sole it obviously means Sicily but this is not by us obviously with the square and the concept of three and red for the old world order the uh, circle f the, or the sun and the circle for the uh, compass so this is definitely by them and i can promise you they it's not a reference to the island of sicily but it is a meaning an internal meaning for and by our masters because this here the logo is by our masters and it is a government institution by them. The island of the sun is, of course, related to the pharaonic creation story. How an island called Atum, the sun god, emerged from the waters in the beginning. 
So here you see the water, here's the island, and here is Atum, the sun god. Here's the sun as well, and here's also the sun. So our masters chose this name, L'Isola uh, del Sole, the island of the sun, to represent in the name a new beginning as in the creation story of the island of the sun. So the film, it was a very good film. I liked it because it's a true story about children um, in mafia families who couldn't find any way out. You know, they wanted to live, some, many of them, they want to live a normal life enjoy life and the internet and go dancing and don't go killing people don't end up in prison and you know do the things children do and uh, this is not allowed inside the uh, the mafia structures because they need to have new uh, members and where do you get new members well the you, you need the juvenile members and start early so L'Isola del Sole, the creation story of the island of the sun, which I'm going to explain to you later. Um, it, it shows a new beginning as for these children after hundreds of years in these ancient mafia structures. Uh, in, in the new era now, there is a new beginning, a new life not anymore in the in the mafia so that's that's why the freemasons out of the uh templars who come out of the nobility who comes who come out of pharaoh they as a reference to the new life for the uh the juvenile victims of the the mafia inside the mafia families uh there will be a new beginning so here we can read just a little bit about the uh, the creation story of Pharaoh, which is very much related to the Bible, of course. And uh, here it says the earliest god Ra uh, and or Atum, both uh, being creator sun gods, emerged from a chaotic state of the world. Now here we also find the um, Ordo Abcao, order out of chaos of the of the Freemasons, and um, here in this ancient picture, on it seems to be papyrus. This is the island of the sun. Here's the sun here as well, and uh, which emerge emerges out of the water so they have it in their in their pictures and uh, so it's a new beginning for the victims of the mafia uh, nothing's without a reason so here it says they all held that the world has arisen out of the lifeless waters of chaos called Nu. They also included a pyramid shaped mound called the Benben, -ben, which was the first thing to emerge from the waters. Yeah, I'll read it for you because this is very important actually. And um, all these films and videos, it's just filled up with the occult and. Uh, the uh, history and symbols of uh, the ancestors of our masters. Yeah. Ra, the greatest god of ancient Egypt, the origin story of how Ra spawned, all that is known, is both fascinating and illuminating. Before creation, according to Egyptian mythology, only darkness embraced the primeval ocean, out of which life would come. You see, out of the ocean with an island. When the breath of life was strong and ready, the entity called Atum decided it was time for creation to begin. An island emerged from the water to support this divinity, who manifested itself in the form of uh, Ra, the sun god 
of Egypt. This is the Lisola del Sole, the island of the sun, coming out of the water, going on here. On a primeval hill, Ra created out of himself the first gods, Shu, dryness and air, and his partner Tefnut, humidity, who would engender other gods to complete the cosmos, Jeb, the earth god, and Nut, the sky goddess. In turn, these two birth the principles of life, namely Osiris, the perfect being, who eventually would rule over the rest of the world, which Ra was busy creating by naming the elements. And by the way, humankind happened out of the tears of his eyes. Again, water. Osiris was a kind and wise ruler who taught humans agriculture and civilization with his sister and wife, Isis, who helped her husband with creativity and magic. They formed the perfect couple. Remember what we saw with the snake, the perfect couple? Isis and Osiris combined, you know, the, uh, the ostrich feathers of uh, Osiris together with the sun disk, and the, uh, again, the island of the sun, the sun disk and the, uh, the Isis horns together uh, on top of the snake. I'll read it again. They formed the perfect couple. And that was in India. Their brother Seth was strong but unruly, the opposite of his brother. In fact, Seth envied Osiris so much that he killed him. He got the, um, um, the, 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 the biblical story of... Um, of the two brothers killing each other. Oh, well, I forgot, I forgot their, their names. It will come back. In, I'll read again here. In fact, Seth envied Osiris so much that he killed him so he could inherit his throne and rule Egypt the way he wanted. Seth's sister, partner, and, and partner, Nephthys, could not stop the murder despite her love for their uh, siblings. Ah, Cain and Abel. This is the story of Cain and Abel, you know, definitely. The whole Bible is a, is a pharaonic book, you know, talking about uh, pharaohs and kings, and they didn't even know the Europeans. It stops at the Mediterranean, you know. So God was pharaoh in this book. It's Killing Osiris turned out not such a bad idea. He was resurrected uh, through the magic of his wife long enough to impregnate her son, her with son Horus, who would later avenge his father and recapture the throne of Egypt. In the battle, he lost an eye. You know, this is the all-seeing eye. Horus lost an eye in the battle with Seth. Then Osiris departed to the other world to rule over the deceased, thus ensuring resurrection and the cycle of life. So the obelisk stands for Osiris, and that's why we find it so much on cemeteries. As it says, Osiris rules in, um, uh, uh, over the other world uh, of the deceased. Yes, the myth do not end here. While the aging Ra was fine-tuning his creations, uh, humanity rebelled against him. The god decided on extermination, asking his tear-given, giving eye again for help. To fulfill her task, the eye transformed, transformed herself into a fierce lioness. You know, the eye again, the all-seeing eye, and the eye of... Uh, um, Ma'at and uh, the other one, the lioness here, the symbol of the um, the nobility, and began slaughtering humanity. You know, the fierce lioness began slaughtering humanity. A hey, nobility, that's what we see. Delighted in her feeding. When Ra saw the carnage, he felt sorry for the beloved children who, like tears, came out of his eyes. And we do see, in fact, the tears in the logo of uh, L'Isola del Sole in the, um, the concept of three over the compass. They are tears. 
also like mafia guys they they like tattoo under their eyes you know these tears or guys being having been in prison he stopped the massacre but refused to live more among humans this led to his journey to the other world where ra created the 12 hours of day by sailing the sky from the eastern horizon to the west illuminating the world and allowing all creations to flourish under his rays reaching the western horizon ra then left the earth in darkness this is why we have the western world they talk about the western world because he reaches the western horizon and uh, uh, darkness for 12 hours of night while he sailed the underworld Ill illuminating uh, the dead destroying the enemies of creation and regenerating himself in a un union with osiris the god of um, re resurrection oh yeah it was hathor i wanted to say before the goddess uh, hathor related to well, i don't remember what uh, when ra appeared at dawn in the eastern horizon he took the form of a falcon known as horakti or horus or my name horus of the horizon the falcon who flies high in the sky horus is one who is high up but ra had other forms he also could be represented as a scarab you remember the initiation ritual of the uh the, was with the scarabs at this the the swiss tunnel the um the scarab called kepa the one who comes into being and you know it comes into being you like uh, the tunnel coming into being <laughs> being like whatever they you know the it, it, will come out of it yeah the beast an analogy based not only on the pun between the name of the scarab and the verb to happen but also because the scarab who arises from desert sands at the first rays of the sun pushing a ball of dung carrying his eggs was believed to be self-created and by midday the sun was again Ra and represented by the sun disk. At sunset he became Atum, an old man who had completed his life cycle and was ready to disappear, to be regenerated for a new uh, day, well, etc. So here you can see the tears of Ra out of which humanity uh, was created out of the tears of Ra and this is why the mafia boy is crying because he's starting a new life away from the mafia tears tears uh, because of the the tears in the creation story uh, humankind getting created out of the Ra. So, with the help of these ones here, L'Isola del Sole, the organization, the boy is gonna start a new life, as in the creations of humankind out of the tears of Ra, Amun Ra, and Atum. And one more time, which Ra was busy creating by naming the elements. And by the way, humankind happened out of the ear, tears of his eyes who is his his is ra in the creation story of ancient egypt the ones that are ruling over us and these films are so important for them you know because it, it shows images as they're like images you know like in the hieroglyphs they are today's hieroglyphs with their secret symbology so th that's why there's a lot of you know all the actors it's all blown up and you know they take themselves it's being considered as so important it's in the media all the time and uh, because it's important for them the, the the cinema and videos are today's hieroglyphs and the ancient 
Of course, Egypt lies just on the other side of the dip from Sicily, with Sicily one of the first places to be visited by Pharaoh, before they went on and founded Rome and the Roman Empire. So here you can see some pyramids. This is a part of the sun disk or the Isis horns, the Nile. And this is Caesar with a Roman soldier. It's just around Egypt, it's just around the corner from Sicily. Eh? So here it says, why was Caesar in Egypt? Well, he doesn't know to know it himself here in this picture. <laughs> well, in fact, he did. It's a fairly good question. Why was Caesar in Egypt? But an even better answer to that question is, you know, Caesar was in Egypt because the pharaohs were in Rome and they founded Rome and they took their people with them the Egyptians, who are now called the Italians. So the, their favorite people were, of course, the uh, at a certain moment, the jaywalkers. Until the moment they ran away, then they were not God, Pharaoh's beloved people anymore. And the Pharaohs also had their ordinary people. And they took them with them first to Greece and then to, uh, to Italy, and they became the Italians, whom we find everywhere in the world. I mean, people talk about immigrants and guest workers and not always about, you know, there's so many of them, and, but nobody ever thinks about the Italians anymore. They're, they're basically everywhere. So here we can see Roman Egypt, and here is the Mediterranean, here's Egypt, and you see Greece is here. The Pharaohs first expanded to Persia, like uh, this way, and then they, uh, they crossed the dip into Greece, and then they went here to Sicily, which is really the island well, it's just a manner of speaking, the island of the sun, like, you know, but this is also an island of the sun, this too, this too, this too, this too, they're all islands of the sun. But, uh, well, I'll explain to you the story. And this is interesting here. The, so you can read it yourself. Uh, see if I can find it. Um. Oh, there it is. Here, look. They call it a Coptic cross. Wow, well, looks nice, the Coptic cross, but. Um, in fact, it isn't, you see. Uh, like here, the Coptic cross at the ends, it has like a, um, it's, it's pointed like a sticking outwards, you know. And in, in, in the middle, it's, uh, you know, it's rectangular, you know. It's a straightaway line here, and here's a st thing sticking out here, and this is, well, the, the thing you in the middle, actually, it looks a bit more like. Anyway, look here. This is a Templar's cross, of course. It doesn't have this thing sticking out here as the, that Coptic cross. And you can see that this has been done later, you know, in it. The, uh, there's a, it's a part of the material has been carved out. And... Um, well, the Knights Templars, they were in Egypt, so where they got the treasure from. 
It's quite interesting. It, you can find it at the Temple of Isis at Philae. Yeah, well. I mean, the old world has always been lying to Northern Europe, people. So, always been lying. Oh. Talking about Templars crosses. Apparently, two years ago, in 2020, these crop circles were found in the north of France, showing a Templar's cross. I wonder if someone has checked out if there's a Templar's commandery in the vicinity. In the film Immortal Engines, from 2018, our pharaonic masters show their official hieroglyph of the sun in the charming word immortal to accentuate death. And pharaoh or pharaoh god is the master over life and death with a pharaonic sphinx behind which has become the nobility's lion's symbol for the aristocratic descendants of Pharaoh ruling over their white slaves with blue eyes, forced to have their red house mask over her face or their faces by the red house old world order vertical feudal rule with their lions, sphinxes and sun hieroglyphs for us the mortals, exactly as the word in the image says. There were many more occult symbols of Pharaoh in this movie, but I can't find the film anymore which was taken off the web. So you see the slave here. So it's definitely slaves and masters. Slave European with blue eyes and needing to, to have this censorship thing over her mouth in red of the old world order Per Tasser red house and on the other side the lion our masters and the word this is the official sun hieroglyph of the pharaohs and in the middle there's a little square you see this is a circle so it also says square and square and compass and everywhere in the e they make sure you understand this is a horizontal line because normally the E, the line here, it stops here in the middle here. Same thing with the G and another E and the A here. They make sure that you understand that they're talking about the horizontal rule and here as well, the L. So all pharaonic symbols are there. So this is the the sun hieroglyph it's an official sun hieroglyph it's not a coincidence people i mean why would they put a dot in the o i and the mask and the lion and the horizontal line here and 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 they don't make any any coincidences you know they're very precise and they think about everything so the blue-eyed North European slaves being censored with the, right, the red cloth over their mouth of the old world's order by our masters of the nobility. And we are the mortals and they are probably not. Here it is, the same symbol as in the word mortal in the film. Only a mortal, they even do it better, they made a little square. It almost looks like a dot. It's the same thing. 
And this is the official Sun hieroglyph. I'll let you read it yourself here. Oh, I can do it. Ra, Re, or Re. Re, you know, it means the king, like in Spanish. Re, El Re, El Re de España, El Re Juan Carlos. Is the ancient Egyptian solar deity by the 5th dynasty, 2494 to 2345. Before counting, he had become a major god in ancient Egyptian religion, identified primarily with the midday sun. So there's a difference between the sun and the midday sun. Well, anyway, this is the hieroglyph for the sun, just like in the film. Here's some more pharaonic hieroglyphs for man, woman, the sun. That's why I wanted to show that to you, just as in the film mountain walk move back well, i was just moving back probably like michael jackson like the moonwalk shuffle or whatever they call it this is where he got the moonwalk shuffle from right from the pharaohs it's probably one of them or he was one of them and here again the hieroglyph for sun this is the hieroglyph for Ra at midday sun. You see the rays are going almost down. You know, it's midday. The horizon here. This is a part where the two mountains, um, I think in Karnak, where it shows this. Um, and here's the snake with the sun or the sun disc, as in the Indian temple, the sun god. This is Apis, so it says Gnum. The god of sun set, you know, sun and set. Set is the lord of the underworld, underworld, where it's dark. That's why they call it sun set. And this means horizon. And well, anyway, there it is again. Hieroglyph for sun, just like, just like in the film. Here you see the, one of the ostrich feathers again of Osiris and on the, uh, in the, in the temple. So here you see two things of the temple here, the, the feather and the sun disk again. So, and here the midday sun. Here it says logographic sign for sun. Logographic, it means it even looks like the sun, you know, or an eye in this case, you know. So this phrase, it means the sun shines. Well, I think this is a bit easier. Eh? <laughs> And uh, so the hieroglyph of the sun, just an example. And of course, the feather is uh, again the Indian feather, and think of the Book of Mormon. Who knows? And here again, the title of the film, Mortal Engines with the Sun hieroglyph here in the middle. Damn. I can't even quietly watch a movie and relax with always with all these things running through my mind. Eh? Here they call it the sun dot and uh, they gave it the name here, the sun dot marine logo, which is quite interesting. So this is what it says here. You can read it yourself. Uh, a lot of people have been asking where a name Sun Dots came from when our company was founded in 1964 uh, by Dorsey Miller. She had a fascination with Egypt and its hieroglyphics. You see, there's another name. They call it glyphs, hieroglyphics, hieroglyphs, hieroglyphs, and whatnot. You probably never would have thought that a fish flag company would have anything to do with Egypt, but the inspiration for our logo in fact came from one of the oldest civilizations on earth the ancient egyptians had numeral hieroglyphics to represent the sun we could give deep into trying to explain them all but for now we will just give you a brief description of the egyptian sun glyph so there it says the sun glyph i like that sun glyph that's a nice name right There we go. Mortal engines. So mortal engines. Are we, our bodies, are they the mortal engines of our souls? You know? 
our soul comes down and we take over a mortal engine. That's probably what they mean with it. In part one of the series, Bobby Kennedy for president at 56 minutes into the documentary. Robert Kennedy is transmitting the Freemason stance for Master Mason with his feet to all the initiates. As he knows, he's being filmed. And he also shows the hidden hand of the Freemasons, which to my knowledge, it should be the right hand. But I suppose if you're left-handed, you have to do it with the, uh, with the left hand. So I don't know if Bobby Kennedy was left-handed or right-handed. This is just an awkward way to stand. A position you just don't take naturally. Here in the image, you can see some Freemason foot positions, amongst which Kennedy's Master Mason signal to the shadow government behind the screens. So this is step three. Step two is fellow craft. Step one is entered apprentice. And step three, what we just saw here, it's Master Mason, and this is what Kennedy did. I mean, these things exist, and you don't stand like this naturally. Or at least I, I never done that. And then there was, of course, this here, the hidden hand, simultaneously done with the Master Mason foot stance. Yeah. Look, the hidden hand, the Masonic hand de gesture. Karl Marx, he's a right-hander. Friedrich Nietzsche, right hand. Baron von Knigger, right hand. Pope Francis, right hand. Oh, look at that. George Washington is doing the left hand. A South Pole, as boxers say, eh? So it's valid. You know, it, it, Bobby Kennedy just did the hidden hand of Freemasonry together with the uh, Master Mason foot stance. And there are some more um, South Poles here. I'll show it to you. So George Washington is a South Pole, Paul, a left-hander. And I'll show you some more. Now look, here are 10 more. Do you recognize any? Do you see any South Poles here? Masonic sign, right hand. Frédéric Bartholdi, uh, that's the guy who made the, uh, the Statue of Liberty, a 33-degree Freemason. And he went to Egypt, and after he did that, he, made the, uh, he got so inspired. He made that uh, Statue of Liberté, Fraternité, Égalité. And actually, I'm staying right next to it at the moment. I'm in Colmar, next to Colmar. Joseph Stalin, a right-hander. Napoleon, a right-hander. Oh, look! Good old Beric, he's a southpaw. Look, he's a left hand, eh? Look at that. Lafayette, right-hand. Edgar Allan Poe. Oh, he's another southpaw, a left-hander. Mozart, right-hander. Robert E. Lee, left-hander, a southpaw. Charles Darwin, another southpaw. So, it's completely valid. Uh, Bobby Kennedy in the video is uh, he's transmitting all sorts of Freemason symbology and, and signs and ideas and you know what, what they're going to do next. You know. And he also had this weird facial expression, you know, when he was sliding his hand under the jacket. Why he's doing it this high? Because here it's all buttoned up, you know. You can't. You can only do it here. And if you look at the video, which I'm not allowed to do here because of uh, the copyrights and all that, I can take a screenshot, apparently. And um, so, um, yeah, he, he definitely, there's a whole change of energy 
and it changes in facial expression when he when he is doing it. I saw it. I noticed it. Definitely Freemasonry. Of course, all presidents are. You know, otherwise you don't get there. And I suppose this is in the White House. Here you can see one of the soldiers of the shadow government, a Knights Templar by the name of Anders Breivik. It says Knights Templar Europe and Norway, whose father, who you can see here to the right, was a diplomat at Norway's embassy to France and to England. So definitely Pharaoh's nobility, because normal slaves will never make diplomats. So here you can read about Anders Bering Breivig. And there he is. And he has a fairly long nose, which is quite aristocratic, as the Scandinavians usually have these very short and flat, almost little noses. Maybe because it's cold, you know, so you don't want to stick your nose out too much, you know. And I met some Norwegians a couple of years back, four or five years back, on the French motorway in the middle of the night where I was hitchhiking. And they were in class together with uh, Breivik and told me, uh, even in school, he must have been a kid, he had a nose operation done out of, um, out of beauty uh, arguments, apparently. So it's quite a long nose. I've seen longer, but I mean, father is a diplomat, which you can see here. There you go. There you go. So Breivik was born in Oslo. His mother, a nurse, and Jens David Breivik, born 1935, a civil e economist who worked as a diplomat for the Norwegian embassy in London and later in Paris. Well, you don't become a diplomat just like that. Eh? So this is upper class. And apparently this is uh, an inside job by Pharaoh. I wonder if the guy is at all in prison. I wonder, you know, because it's completely sealed. Nobody, nobody really knows, you know. Anyway, we're being lied all the time, you know. We're being lied and lied and lied to. There he is. Huh? The Utoya massacre of 2011, killing 69 future politicians while still juveniles had nothing to do with right-wing terrorism. As a member of the Swiss Templar Octogon had told me 11 years ago, but it was a cleansing by our masters of non per a future politicians. Out of a normal Norwegian slave families and potential danger of these future socialists to Pharaoh's nobility in control. Giving too much of Norway's considerable wealth to the people and Pharaoh's slaves of Norway. Instead of the usual elite parasiting on us all. So the children had to go to eliminate the danger 
for our masters. And there, children, you all see the Templars cross here, and here the concept of four, and the triangle is the concept of three. It's a state capitalism in Norway. Here you can see the flag of Norway in a sort of a money compass. And here it says wealth. So the money compass is directing Norway to wealth. So Norway is extremely rich, comparable to other oil producing nations like in the Middle East. And where there's money, and lots of money, the Templars and their Swiss are there. And yes, they were there. And it's so obvious with Anders Breivik out of a diplomatic family being a Knights Templar. They don't even hide it, people. Look, it's all over. He, he had, yeah, another Knights Templar, Red Cross. They don't even hide it. And just watch how his Swiss pals, like the Swiss governor, Oskar Freisinger, no, not Oskar Schindler, more the opposite, Oskar Freisinger, here he is, Swiss. And he's the opposite of Oskar Schindler. He's a friend of this one. This is his hero. And yeah, I'll show that to you. So he expressed himself and the Swiss cynically about the mass murder on 69 children at Utoya Island by the Norwegian Templar showing the photo of Templar Breivik, which you can see here, and cynically saying at a poster of their Swiss Nazi party, the SVP, is cynically saying that drugs kill. And Swissy here literally smearing the memory of 69 murdered children with this sort of Swiss Nazi humor, which I don't really appreciate. So here it says, you see the Templar, he just murdered 69 children. And Swiss, he comes out with this and he says here, la drogue tu, he killed, that means drugs kill. Horrible, disgusting. So I, me, homie Ross, I, uh, 11 years ago, I made this video about it. Well, it says here June 25th, 2012, but uh, it is a copy from my other channel, also called Gure, which uh, was taken off. So here's the title on my channel, Gatsefrat. And uh, look, I had a lot of comments. Wow, four comments I had. I can even still sort by newest first. Oh, there are even more, six years ago. <laughs> These people probably don't even know what happened to me. There's eight years ago, ten years ago. Yeah. Hey, Swissy. So I made these two videos about the Swiss Breivik connection 11 years ago in 2011, for which the Swiss Nazis have heavily terrorized me and my family, with their Swiss Nazi police coming round all the time to haul me up in handcuffs with a gun on my head to put me in several high security torture detention centers. The Swiss governor, Oskar Freisinger, whom you can see here, even has Nazi flags in his cellar at home, which is a perfectly normal thing for a Swiss politician to do. 
and we can all see the Templar cross here in black which is the cross of the German speaking branch of the Knights Templars which started really in Switzerland and they are called the Teutonic Knights of which Putin of St. Petersburg in the Teutonic Knights area of which he is a, a member of and he takes his orders from these sort of people here you know, from Switzerland. So this is what it said in the newspaper and of course a lot more but it's all in German so I'm not going to uh, show that all and here it says Reichskriegsflagge im Keller the the German well, you know with the with the Templars cross uh, in the cellar which is almost the same word and here's his name Oskar Freisinger so it's not to be mistaken with Oskar Schindler who's completely the opposite from Oskar Freisinger um, sounds a bit similar, doesn't it? And here it says the SVP Nationalrat. Nationalrat is a governor, and SVP is the Swiss Schweizer Volkspartei, the Swiss People's Party. It's it's a complete Nazi party, and they are. I mean, it's the biggest party in Switzerland, of course. No. The Norwegian socialists had this holiday training camp on the island of Utoya in order to train a normal slave children into politicians and even called their project Generation Utoya if I remember that well because that was in 2011. So a new generation of socialist politicians by the slaves made the elite fear for their ways to parasite on the people in the near future. So the slaves of Norway were attacked twice, once in Utoya and robbed of their child politicians from within the people and secondly massive government repression by the authorities on Norwegian nationalists of the Norwegian slaves as all the media had already decided anyway who was to blame for the Utoya massacre it was all a setup and in the motherland and base of the nazi templars they keep a mummy by the name of ta sherit and imen which means the daughter of the god amun ra and we can see the royal word sar in sherit or sher it Shar it or Sar it. And Sar is the demotic word for king or queen. The Egyptian mummy was found recently in the attic of a Tessin village in Switzerland, where they speak Italian and now being examined in the French speaking town of. Neuchâtel. Well, some Swissies have genuine pharaonic mummies up in the attic of their family residence, which is quite normal in Switzerland, apparently. Your granny from 3000 years back is just lying in the attic, kids. And be careful, kids when you look for last year's toys in the attic and don't drop your football on granny. Switzerland is a very creepy place indeed with ancestral mummies in the attic. You all remember 
the Swiss ritual of the Swiss tunnel in 2016, don't you know? But how many of you have recognized the sun, Amun-Ra, in the background of Pharaoh's hiding place in the Alps? Another Isola del Sole, Pharaoh's island of the sun in the Alps, where all their might is concentrated, a strategic island in the middle of Europe. And again, the feathers of Osiris together with the sun disk, as in the Indian temple. The feathers of Osiris representing death, as Osiris is the lord of the afterworld. Gate to hell opened, satanic ritual exposed. The feathers of Osiris, Isis, her sun disk of Amun-Ra. The Swiss ritual has written death all over it. Of course, furthermore accentuated by the three scarabees and pharaoh's symbol of the reincarnation. But there are only three, the concept of three, which is them, our masters, and only our masters are allowed to reincarnate, which is not for the slaves and the people. It's written all over people, and it's all Pharaoh. The elite Swiss masters called the Daig, which you can read here, the Daig from Switzerland. The elite masters. And typical families of the Swiss Daig Pharaohs are Sarazin and Marian. Sarazin and Merion, which are totally pharaonic names with Sar meaning king, pharaoh, Ra for Amun-Ra, the sun god, for the name Sarazin, giving altogether Sar-Ra-On for pharaoh, sun god, Osiris in the demotic pharaonic language and Merion, Merion, is me for pyramid, Ri meaning the sun, and on Osiris, thus Merion for pyramid, sun, Osiris. It says, nonetheless, seats in the Grand Council of Baselstadt, as well as other important positions in both public service and industry, are still routinely held by individuals with family names indicative for Daig affiliation, such as Visha, Sarazin, or Marian. Sar, Ra, On, Sa, Ra, Sin, Me, Ri, On. Merian, the Daig, which is a um, which is a fact here. So here you can see the tower of um, of the Roche pharmaceutical enterprise, and there is a lot of these names uh, related to that company. The names which I just showed you before. So here you can read the whole thing. So this is the Daig from Switzerland. Pure pharaohs. The word Daig is Swiss German for the Dao. And in High German, das Daig, the sticky mixture of water, flour, salt and yeast to bake a bread with meaning the elite per a pharaonic family are sticking together like the dough 
Here it says, we are family and families stick together. And even if you would pull it, it would bounce back like elastic, sticky dough, the dyke. Or like the elite, after having had a charming conversation with them, they always bounce back, stick with their own, and impossible to make friendships with them. Ooh, peasants. Our masters of Pharaoh's elite, the Daig, they want everyone else to mix, except themselves, the principle of the Daig. Only problem, there is no white in a rainbow. The Swiss Daig elite are pure pharaohs in their impregnable octagon base of the Nazi Templars in the Alps, ruling over the entire world. Hey, Swissy, we're getting there, Swissy.